Now I introduce my friend and colleague, uh, Mir Chalika, who is on the way to become an expert in hernia surgery, and he will present his journey in uh, hernia surgery. Thank you so much. I'm very glad that here late in the afternoon there are people in the room waiting for the last presentations. So this is my disclosure, but the real one that matters is that, that I work in MedLife and I know Victor Rado. So think, I'm thinking about my path in hernia as a journey to the highest mountain, which I started ten, 10 years ago in an emergency hospital in Bucharest, when I have to deal mostly with cases like this. So I start my journey with a very few tools for hernia today, but the laparoscopic skills and a solid classic surgical knowledge, thanks to my uncle, which is right here in the hall. So in 2040, I met Victor and we start working together. We even published a few notebooks about how to do a modern minimal invasive hernia surgery. And this is my first case of TAP. It happens at one o'clock in the morning, uh, f uh, struggling to find an anesthetist to give me a, a general anesthesia for a hernia. And what was a surprising was then in the next morning, six hours later, patient was standing up, waiting for me, asked me, what can I eat for breakfast because I'm really hungry. Since then, I had many other cases, some were difficult, some were easier, some were diverse. These patients, I put it here because they are kind of special to me. They both have a transplant, liver transplant and pulmonary transplant. So, I'm pretty comfort comf comfortable with the inguinal hernia until last month, when I have to reoperate this patient, not because of that, because of other condition, and I saw my operation done two, just two weeks before. He has a right inguinal hernia, and now we have to do another pathology, and I find this VLOC actually growing into the small bowel. So, what to do? I thought, it's a fistula? No, it's not fistula, it's just like the bowel is eating that absorbable suture. It's absorbable, right? So, I have to cut it. After careful examination and thinking, oh my God, it's going to make a fistula or later or what. So look at this. In only two weeks, so this time I have no hesitation looking at it. It's just, the scissor had two and a half centimeters. It's less than one centimeter, that, that part. So this time I sh really Cut it short. Okay. So this is my experience about IPOM. And this is almost my experience about IPOM Plus. Because in 2017, we were together at Vienna and we say together goodbye to IPOM. I even present my first case two months later, and I had, got comments from Jorge da Ezen Philip Meissens. So a typical ETAP case for me looks mostly like this. This is not, it's an incisional hernia after an epigastric trocar, and he looks okay after three years later. I flirt a little bit with the Milos, and uh, <laughs> I found it uh, easy or uh, appropriate for 
uh, older people who will not support a longer general anesthesia. So more, I think, eight years experience uh, learned me not to uh, be, to have man, many cases, to learn as many procedures as you can get, is to think and to use that third eye to maybe look at the CT scan. So when you look at the CT scan like this, when a radiologist will never tell you what is the lens of the defect, or what is the lens of the rectus muscles, or what is the volume inside and outside. They don't know about carbonyl, they, don't know, they do not know about Tanaka. So you have to learn it. So that's the patient in a real life. Loss of domain, so we have to uh, get a, a optimization by using Botox, which is another thing that I learned together with our friends in uh, ultrasound. And that's the patient after Botox. And we don't want to have any problems, so we decided to, to maybe the Botox will be enough, but we decided to get a pneumoperitoneum, which generally we perform under uh, sedation and direct visualization with a five millimeters camera. It's, I consider it safer for the beginning. And that's the patient ready for surgery, which was one of the nicest surgery in my life, I can tell you. That's why I'm presenting it today. So we have big sac, almost no adhesions. We open the retromuscular space, continue with the tar, a real good dissection on the side, same on the other part. Put a large mesh to cover that defect. Then we close it and that's the patient three months later. What a success. Well, not exactly. If you look here and here, you'll find some marks because the patient has a wound infection, let's say seven days after discharge and uh, happily it was a superficial one, but I have no hesitation to treat it with a VAC system, a pr negative pressure system. And also if you look careful, closely, you can find a bump here that really bothers him and also bothers me and proved to be a hematoma, quite large one, uh, which separate the mesh from the muscles, so it's a retromuscular. I try to aspirate, it doesn't work, so we have to cut it a little bit open and take it out. So that's the patient one year later. So this is the evolution, initial Botox, pneumoperitoneum, and last month. Another thing that I have learned is when you start a procedure, learn how to finish. Always have a plan B, always have a plan C. And let's see this lady, which doesn't have much of a hernia, if you look like this, but you see there is no belly button. He has three procedures. The classical one, I could say, first umbilical hernia, then suture, then mesh, small mesh, then bigger mesh on top. So here, she, here she is today. If you look at the CT scan and do the measurements, you can see there is a 80 centimeters hernia. And quite wide rectus. Doesn't have the criteria to think of a tar or maybe a Botox or something like that. But remember, he had a big onlay mesh as she described the last surgery. So, if you look right here, with the third eye, the, let's, let's see a little bit. That's the tricky part, because this is the rectus on one side, on the other side. That line here is the old mesh. That's the fascia, and that's the bowel stick it in a pocket between 
the rest of the abdominal wall and the mesh. It doesn't look much, but when you see that, think about. So I decided to do just to be sure that I could approximate those def this defect on a rigid margin, I just put the, the Botox. There was actually no indication for it, but it looks like a rigid abdomen to me. So it is. We ha she has basically a bowel growing into that mesh, which I have to remove, which I have to suture, and someone to resect. So at that point, I was wondering, uh, I'm planning to do a retromuscular repair. I just suture a bowel, I resect one, and if something go wrong happens, it will be a disaster. There will be no, no other plan for, for her recurrence. So I decided to close, just close, suture, simple suture, and come back seven days later, reopen, do retromuscular repair, a little bit of tar on both sides. It wasn't necessary to go all the way up, a mesh, and this is the patient one year later. So that's the original defect, 90 centimeters. This is today, on the same place. And she's doing fine. But unfortunately, he got 10 more kilos, which I, which I don't like. You can see it in on the CT scan. The CT scan don't lie. So, after um, maintaining, uh, maintaining your uh, willing to, to learn new things and adapt to new things, you can solve other cases like this. And open surgery is a good way to start. And that's the patient later. So I'm on my way. I'm on my way to the, to the hernia top, but now I have more things in my backpack that I have learned in the last year, eight years. So you wonder how can you know that you're a good surgeon? How can you measure the goodness of your ability? So if we look like this, we have our national system that says after 100 year operation, you can go to the laparoscopy level two, which allows you to do whatever you want in laparoscopy. We have this American Center of Excellence qualification, and we have this one, which is an European certification of hernia surgeon. So I'm on my way to it. So my talk doesn't have any conclusion, I have just would want to inspire you to progress on your surgical skill and starting from I don't want to do it to yes, I did it. You need some help from your friends. Thank you very much. That's good.